We're switching gears a bit on the urban debate tonight because there's another issue that I'm sure a lot of us have been discussing in the drawing rooms and on social media. After Virat whom? A decision for the selectors uh, after Virat Kohli announced that he was stepping down as T20 captain after the World Cup in October. Now, the front-runner undoubtedly is Rohit Sharma, but will the BCCI look to the future to groom talent? Could it perhaps be KL Rahul or, or a complete wild card? Whoever the next man in the hot seat will be, he'll have pretty big shoes to fill given Virat's legacy. But was this hot seat vacated voluntarily or uh, did it have its fair share of intrigue? To discuss that, we have uh, senior sports journalist Vijay Lokapali, uh, sports commentator Charu Sharma and uh, former Indian cricketer Deep Das Gupta will also be joining us in a while. Uh, Vijay, if I can just start off uh, with you on that. There was a very unequivocal statement from the BCCI that said Virat Kohli is not going anywhere. He's going to continue as the captain for the next, uh, for across all three formats. But Virat's message and Virat's, uh, that long post that he mentioned clearly said that he'd been taking the BCCI also into confidence. So it was unlikely that the BCCI was caught off guard or were not in the loop that this was, uh, this was coming through. Well, I don't think because uh, he obviously was in touch with the BCCI. He would not take any decision being a responsible and a senior player. Uh, nobody does that. And uh, and he, he's had a wonderful career and a good relationship with the BCCI. Why would he kind of tarnish it now at the uh, towards, you know, this stage of his um, career? So I don't think he would have taken this decision without informing BCCI. He had taken them into confidence. Um, the Ravi Shastri was aware of it. And the selectors are aware of it. So essentially, please remember, selectors are going to appoint the next captain and they have to be in the loop because they are the link between uh, BCCI and the captain when it comes to identifying the talent and picking the future players or captains and whatever. So I don't think there is, um, we have been reading too much into it uh, because uh, it's Virat Kohli and the Indian captaincy is a very, a very, what should I say, a very prestigious thing uh, in, in, in sporting circles. You are leading the Indian cricket team. So give us, uh, let us accept that Virat wants to concentrate on ODI captain ODI and uh, and test cricket in future and he's there at least till the World Cup let us see how he performs and then we can look forward to who can be the deputy well uh, Charu I don't think anyone can deny the kind of pressure that Virat Kohli carries on his shoulders the entire nation is watching him analyzing every single thing that he does uh, was the pressure eventually going to get to him in some way because we have seen a dip in his batting form and I say dip, you know, it's hardly a slump, but it's something that a person of his calibre and a person who has such high standards would be upset with himself regarding. Was that pressure beginning to show uh, and was this in many ways inevitable? Well, Arthi, there's no doubt that he will be a little displeased with his individual form. So that's one aspect. But he's no shrinking violet. So he's not going to be hurt by a few negative comments or some people talking about his captaincy and so on and so forth. So this is not a reaction to people saying, why is he still there? Because Kohli is far above all of that. But yeah, I mean, it would be hurting him that he hasn't scored enough runs. And if he can find a way to perhaps focus on his batting once again and shed a little of the responsibility, remember that he's still captain of the ODIs as well as the test matches. So it's not that he's reduced his uh, responsibility by 80% perhaps just 20%. It gives him a little more room to perhaps relax and enjoy his T20 matches. Not much more because he's still sk skipping the rest. But it's just very quickly though, Aarti, I, I do think it's time we move away from this excessive attention or should we even say obsession to the captain of the Indian cricket team. Because cricket is one of those very few sports where there's just this enormous responsibility thrust on an individual when it is a team game. Now, if we're suggesting that and by the way, it's my favorite theory that captaincy in cricket is inversely proportional to the seniority of the team. So the more senior a team, like the national team, for instance, doesn't need a captain to say you hold a ball like this, you hold a bat like this, and this is what you can do. I mean, everybody knows his or her job uh, to the T. The captain does have to perform certain formalities, and, and sometimes, of course, that can get a little irritating. Uh, what can also get irritating is that you, you're heaped with all the criticism when the team loses. But that, of course, is set off when the team wins. You <laughs> you get a lot of praise as well, despite the fact that you may have scored a zero or been hit for 40 runs in uh, you know in an over. So we should just relax about the captaincy. There are hundreds of examples, well, 
dozens of examples where a captain has left in the middle of a series, somebody else has come in and done equally well. And that should be a pointer to all the cricket fans in India. But let's just back off from this whole captaincy thing and focus on this bunch of 11 performers who need to do their thing on the cricket field every day. Well, well correct me if I'm wrong, but I see Deep Das Gupta nodding in agreement and Vijay Lokapalli disagreeing. So, uh, I, I don't know, Deep, let's start off with you, whether you agree with what Charu is saying, that perhaps we are overemphasizing on the role of the captain and uh, th that's it's something that's overhyped. Uh, personally, I, I don't think it's overhyped. I think, uh, I mean, when you're talking about Indian captaincy, uh, it, it comes with, with a lot of responsibility. I mean, the Indian cricket team or cricket in India per se, as we call it, you know, a religion, obviously the Indian captain has a lot more responsibility. And that's where I think it was, uh, 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 you know, uh, he actually mentioned in that letter that he wants to get some workload off that workload, not necessarily has to be physical, that could be mental as well. And in my opinion, I think that that workload was affecting his batting. Uh, if you look at, you know, a lot of people have been talking about his technical changes in that in in England series, but I thought it was more to do with, I think, the mental side of it. Uh, so I, I think this this whole workload that he mentioned is is maybe the reason behind, one of the reasons behind. And, and I'm in a certain way kind of glad because the, the World Cup is just a month away. And, you know, this whole... Uh, you know, the, the whole noise that was happening around who should be captain, not captain. I think the team and the players can do without it with a month to go before a, a, a World Cup. So in a way, I think it's about time that this whole thing is kind of rested and let the players and the team concentrate on cricket itself uh, and, and see where it goes. Because, um, you know, uh, obviously, as, and, and you mentioned about an Indian cricket captain. I mean, that, that comes with the territory. When you're the Indian cricket captain, uh, you know, it's, I mean, Vijay Bhai will tell you and, and Charu will tell you, I mean, they've been following cricket a lot longer than I have. It's been the case even before social media or media per se that we have now. So it, it's always been like that. Uh, the Indian cricket team captain has always had this extra responsibility, which I guess, you know, we, we, we want Virat, if you ask me, Virat, we want Virat the player more than Virat the captain, as simple as that. If if he thinks that the workload was affecting him and affecting him, the batsman, anything, anything to get Virat the batsman back, whatever it is. But now India doesn't have one. We have two different uh, captains for different formats of the game. Deep, just do you think that really works? We've seen, uh, I think, almost all countries now, barring India and New Zealand, have a dual captain system. Uh, do you think the system really works? Uh, or, or is mm. it something that can be very messy or very uh, a very fine balancing act to pull off? I don't think it, it can be messy because I think we've kind of accepted the split captaincy theory. And it's not that the other players aren't used to playing under a captain. For example, let's take IPL for an example. I mean, most of these people are playing under a different captain. So they will adapt. And then within a month's time, they'll move into uh, someone else's captaincy and they'll adapt. So I think they will. And most importantly, as Charu mentioned, this is an experienced side. Everyone has been playing with each other for a while now, two, three years. They know each other really well. For example, let's say whoever's captain, uh, for example, Rohit has captain in between, Shikhar has captain. They, they know each other. They know how each other, uh, their mindset, how they work and everything else. I don't. But what I really uh, would like to make a point here is about split captaincy. If you look at all the split captaincies, it's generally white ball and red ball. So I don't know how this is going to work out as T20 and one day and test. So all the cap split captaincies are red, white, because there's a lot of um, uh, players who play just white ball cricket. So there is uh, the teams are very similar, so to say. So, I, I mean, that's something that needs to be looked into, whether that might create confusion or not in terms of red and white. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how, how that pans out. Yeah, I think, I think that's a very, very important point. In fact, even when there was chatter before uh, Kohli's exit, everyone thought or they, they seemed to suggest that he'll probably uh, step down a skipper on white ball cricket and continue on red ball cricket. Uh, uh, Vijay, if I can come to you on that. One, do, do you see this split captaincy is problematic in principle and two given the decision that Kohli has made where he's going to do uh, he's going to continue with tests and one days do you see that being a little complicated uh, are they not really but first let me quickly tell you that i did not disagree with charu i may have not okay, my... <laughs> okay. 
he is a dear friend so there is no reason for me to disagree with him and uh, I, i appreciate his point and of course deep is a cricketer so you have to understand that his perspective brings a lot of value to this debate uh, virat uh, one thing i would love to uh, know from maybe uh, deep uh, and, and jarul and how is the captaincy different i mean if you are a captain you know your players inside out and when you go on to the field whether it's a white ball or a red ball how are you going to treat the game differently if you are in charge when you are there you are go- you know how to get the best out of the players that's what dhoni used to do that's what there was a time i remember when azaruddin was captain he would interfere very little deep if you remember and he, his argument was that if you are playing at this level you should know what you are supposed to do so uh, maybe if maybe virat would be sometimes demanding and nothing wrong with it because he is the captain dhoni also was demanding in his own way he was not very demonstrative as virat is but Uh, i expect virat to carry on after the world cup he should be uh, there in the uh, team as as a one day as a t20 player and maybe later you he can you the bcc will take a call not uh, virat himself if the selectors feel there is a need to change uh, odi captain they will make the change and then test captaincy is very dear to virat so uh, uh, i think let us accept that he has made some fantastic contribution and he knows his job very well when to lead and if he has decided not to lead give the uh, space to him and uh, let us respect his cricket charu do you want to weigh in on that different players different personality uh, and before i allow you to answer that i also want to say that i know your friends but you're allowed to disagree that's that's perfectly okay we're having a civilized disagreement and there's no screaming and shouting so you're you're good to disagree yes yes yeah, yeah these are all just different viewpoints if at all arthi there's no disagreement as such these are different viewpoints and of course i do also deeply value uh, vijay's presence here as well as my good friend deep so okay uh, you know there are many situations here you talk about uh, the players and the understanding of the game and i would like you to arthi also think about this when people you know to a large extent decisions in the field as well as outside the field our think tank matters now if deep is willing to talk about his experiences you know you can go to him right after this you know it's not that one man controls everything and 10 other people are just sitting there you know mindless just saying tell me what to do skipper i don't know everybody knows what to do and the think tank the senior lot always get together and say okay what do we do about this situation here the captain may do the gesticulating this side that side that side but you know a lot of it is joint decision making the senior heads getting together sometimes even the juniors chipping in the keeper is always in in most of the decisions when he's on the field and when you're batting for instance that's half the game what can the skipper even do except individually contribute so i say once again that we need to get off the skipper is god you know because and the one area and you mentioned this earlier is man management now skippers are very different in the, their mental makeup and it's very possible that skippers treat players differently some people take to skippers who treat them softly well some people take to a hard stance well you know the, the skipper has to have his own individual man management skills but otherwise most players know exactly what to do on the field some days it works for them some days it doesn't you find a skipper taking a decision saying all right you why don't you go number 4 today it works out you say wow what a skipper and if it doesn't work out he say kya karne ki zarurat thi yaar now so if virat wants to step and and also one important point you know there's no doubt the skippering the indian team despite the fact there's a, a crown of thorns is a very very prestigious position but especially so if you've not been skipper i mean the new skipper will say wow i am the skipper of india but somebody who's been there for 5 6 years you know for him the importance of skippering reduces and and he just wants or she just wants to make sure that he or she is the best player in the team because very often this has also been said that the skipper of a team should be ideally the best player in the team the you know the strongest mind and so on and so forth so there are many angles to this but if virat says i'm happy to step back and if he's happy to cooperate with the new skipper what more do you want you know yet another brain who doesn't have the load of uh, the final decision Well, let's go to the keeper and ask about a dual uh, skipper system do you want to give us a bit of an insight into the dressing room and how you know how they would receive yeah. and how whether they would be receptive of this so my take is this yes obviously there is a think tank uh, you have senior players you have vice captain you have you know coaches and nowadays you have quite a few of them in that dressing room so you have a think tank but end of the day it's the captain's call right if the captain does not agree he does not agree so uh, i think the from that perspective i would defer just a little bit from uh, vijay bhai and charu that the captain has a huge role and especially in white ball cricket because in test match cricket at least you have some time 
T20, you don't have the time. So you have to take that decision right there and then. In test match cricket, the you know the coach can send in with a bottle of water, with a 12th man, and you know you can send messages. But T20 and 50, you don't have that time. So that way, I think it becomes very important. And as Charu kind of alluded, that it boils down to, as a bowler, I know what to do, but is the skipper going to give me that? You know, that way the skipper becomes very, very important. Is he going to give me the feel that I want? Will he let me bowl the line and length that he wants me to? So all those things. And when does he get me on? Does he get me on when the batsman is set and, and, and it's going at seven, eight and over? Or does he get me when there are two quick wickets and, you know? So I think, especially for a bowler, the captain becomes extremely important in terms of decision-making. Batting-wise, again, I mean, uh, it's a very interesting game of ours. It's a great game, but it's a very interesting that uh, as, as a, when you're batting, you're an individual. You're batting there alone. It's only when you're fielding that you play as a team. As a batsman, it's you against the other 11 on the opposition. Uh, so batting-wise, uh, I mean, obviously, those changes in batting order and all that. And that's where, obviously, the, the team management also get involved. So I somehow think the captain is very, very important, and especially in cricket, unlike some of the other sports like football and other where the manager or the coach is more important than the captain. But I think in cricket, the captain is the man or, or the main decision maker in the side. So from that perspective, it becomes important. And as far as captaincy, Vijay, I mentioned, uh, my only uh, submission here is every every individual has a different way of leading a side. So Virat has, has his own way of leading a side. Rohit has its own way of leading a side or Kale, Rahul or Shikhar or whoever's led the side, MSD and so on and so forth. They have their own ways of leading a side. At times that suits some individuals, at times it doesn't suit. That does not mean he's a good or a bad captain or the player is good or bad. At times, I, at times that does not suit each other. So my submission is if you're getting someone in, you've got to give the team and the individual some time to adapt to each other's style of captaincy. So as a player, if I get a new captain, I should know how the new captain runs the show. What his, are his expectations of me and the team? Right. So I, from that perspective, I think whoever comes in should be given some time and a longer show to, to kind of, uh, you know, uh, let everyone else know that this is his way of leading the side. And also from a player's perspective, they should give the time to understand the captain's uh, way of leading the side. Well, uh, and I don't uh, think there's a better example in Indian cricket of, you know, uh, conflicting personalities or the lack of dynamics like we saw in Greg Chappell and Saurav Ganguly. And that, of course, did have an impact on uh, Indian cricket. So there is, you can't, you know, rule out, of course, personalities and how they get along together. But we're looking now ahead. Now, uh, uh, Vijay Lokupali, let me actually start with you. Everyone seems to think that uh, Rohit Sharma is the man for the job. There seems to be a general consensus, of course, that, that he's most likely to take over. Do you see there being any, you know, a wild card or any dark horse uh, with an eye on the future, given the fact that Rohit himself is 34? Yeah, before I answer this question, I'll just add to Charu and Deep Das about the importance of an Indian captain on the field. Mm -hmm. This is from a test match, the very little crowd, and I was standing near the boundary. I could hear very clearly the captain telling the off spinner who had flighted the ball. He told him in Hindi because they, he didn't want the opposition to understand. He said, Fir flight kiya the ball nahi milega. <laughs> so you can understand. <laughs> so we could hear it at the boundary because there was no crowd at the stadium that day at Mohali. Now, uh, we are talking of Rohit Sharma. Yes, I think there is a general uh, 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 impression that he is very good. He has done very well in IPL, uh, five, uh, five titles, and it's not easy. And he's a very calm guy. I mean, normally, I don't, I don't remember uh, uh, Rohit losing temper on, on, on the field. He's always smiling. I mean, if he gives the ball to a bowler and if he goes for 20 runs in an over, he would still be smiling and going and patting the bowler. So, he'll make a good captain. There is, uh, I mean, if, if tomorrow I'm the selector, I'll, I'll, I'll back Rohit to lead the Indian team. Uh, Charu, what about you? Well, for the moment, of course, he seems the obvious choice, but it's not a long-term choice because you mentioned the fact that he's already 34 and he'll probably captain only the uh, the T20 team if this is an installment plan for Virat Kohli in that he says, OK, let me take a little bit of responsibility off. After all, I'm married now. I've got a child and I've got a wife. To, you know, so I'm a little busier now than otherwise. And maybe another six months, eight months later, I'll give up the white ball captaincy entirely in that Rohit can still take on the ODI captaincy at that point of time. But 
you know, sadly, uh, the, the, the bowlers are not generally in line for, uh, especially the fast bowlers, in line for captaincy, which is another story, and we'll get to that later. So it has to be the top six, really, or the top seven. But let's and assume eight. you had a choice. Charu, if you had a choice in the current lot of bowler, we'll give you that uh, leeway. If you had a choice amongst all the bowlers to pick one to lead the team, who would it be? Well, he's not even playing regularly, but Ashwin has a fabulous mind. Again, he's not the youngest, so, yeah. you know, I think that uh, cerebrally he'll do really well in the cricket field. Yeah. Uh, but if you can only get to the side first, so <laughs> that's different. But, I, you know, it, sometimes um, drastic decisions are taken. I mean, Graham Smith was a captain of South Africa at the age of 21. There are many examples. There was a captain of Australia and New Zealand who hadn't even played test cricket at that point of time. So, at times, there's no harm taking a drastic decision. Now, there's a young man who leads the Delhi Capitals these days. And, uh, you know, so he's leadership material for sure, and he's making almost all the teams. So maybe Rishabh Pant is a good one for the future. And, of course, there's Rahul, uh, who, who, you know, makes the team on occasion. Rahane may not be the youngest again. I would say that if you are now investing in the future, somebody not over 26, 27, so you can have a nice four, five-year run. Mm -hmm. uh, Deep, do you see perhaps some wild card being brought in to, you know, uh, hone them for the future and not really necessarily think immediate or short term? Uh, well, you've got to, isn't it? I mean, when, I, when I'm looking at white ball cricket, there is an ICC World Cup or an ICC event every year, right? Next year, there's another T20, 23, there's a 50 over and so on and so forth till 2031, if I'm not wrong. So, um, see, I, so I, 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 I won't mind Rohit at all because not, not for anything else, not for his seniority, I think he's a good leader. Period. Uh, obviously, we mentioned about his five uh, IPL titles, but let's not forget every time he's led India, He's done well. Uh, I think his win percentage is of above 70% or something, which is really good. And he's led, what, 10, 12 games, which is not a small sample size. So for me, I think uh, just because he's a good leader, not because of anything else, I think uh, for me, it, it should be Rohit if, if there's anyone after Virat. Uh, and in terms of grooming, which I do agree, because you also have to look at the next generation, next generation of leaders coming through. That's where the vice captain becomes very important. And uh, Vijaybhai and Charu both mentioned correctly that even Rohit is 34. So maybe if he get, becomes the captain, there's four years, let's say, you know, at the most, or uh, four, five years. So you, by that time, you groom another, an, another uh, leader uh, and you start now. So you get a vice captain who is, let's say, 28-ish, like KL Rahul, uh, you know, you have obviously Rishabh Pant. I think, again, I agree with Charu. He's, he looks like a leader to me and obviously he's a wicket keeper. Um, I might be a little biased there. I was going to so. say, is it is it pure coincidence that the two people you mentioned are also like how Charu has a bowling bias? Exactly. Do you have a keeping bias so, as well? So, come on, you got to pardon me for my biases there. <laughs> but, but having said that, I mean, those those are guys who, who will mature and get into that leadership role or... or I mean, leadership role from now on and uh, kind of groom them. So I think it is important to get the captain and also the vice captain looking at the future. Uh, we're actually running out of time, but I just want to go around the table with this one last question to all of you to get you to weigh in on that. Now, we're going to see very soon, in fact, not just a change in captaincy, but also perhaps an overhaul completely in the coaching staff. By all looks of it, I don't think Ravi Shastri's tenure is going to be extended, neither is the rest of the support staff. So, uh, Vijay, uh, it's going to be... Quite an overhaul for Indian cricket in the coming days. Mm -hmm. Probably they have indicated also. And uh, I mean, if, if I'm given the choice, I'll pick Vikram Rathor because he's been there with the team. He's a very, uh, very mm, shrewd uh, cricket mind. He has been guiding all these batsmen on these uh, uh, last uh, uh, three, four years whenever he has been uh, uh, with the team management. So uh, my choice would be an Indian. And if it's Indian, then yeah, I'll, I'll back Vikram Rathor. Charu, what about you? Because there's one thing about players are familiar with each other, of course, uh, irrespective of whether it is Rohit or whether it is Virat. Now you have an added element of a third person, and we've seen that how disruptive that can be uh, also in the past. Well, yeah, for starters, I do agree that, you know, Indian cricket has so many heroes, and some of them, of course, have also, should we say, schooled themselves in the art of coaching. So there are plenty of Indian options available. The last thing we should do is go to an overseas coach or even the coaching staff. 
So uh, hopefully it'll be an Indian soon. There's uh, Lalu who does a great job. He's, he's done very well for India in the past. And I'm sure if he throws his hat in the ring, he's won. There are many other coaches. I just would like to say, you know, this is a personal thought, Aarti. I'm sorry to sort of throw it back onto you. You are presenting a program on one of the major national channels of India. If your supervisor, whoever it is, your boss changes, would you come in on the news show and muck it all up and get everything wrong? Or would you say, no, hang on, it doesn't matter. I'm really going to focus on my job and do it well, regardless of who I'm surrounded by. That is the situation, I that think, question. of any professional. I know it was rhetorical. So, I know it was rhetorical, but I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> okay. But that, that, that is the situation that I'm alluding to, that, yeah. you know, these are all professionals. And regardless of who comes into the coaching staff, I know there's a personality issue, and I hope that the Indian board will ensure that there's no major personality clash. But, you know, the professionals play very well, regardless of who's around them. I'm not going to be a batsman who goes into bat and say, yeah, you know, I don't like this coach. I think I'll score five zeros in a row. No, it doesn't happen like that. It's an individual game disguised as a team game. And each individual is only too aware that performance is all. You perform, you're in, you don't, you're out. So it doesn't matter. Excuse me, no excuses. Go there, perform, regardless of the coaching staff. But I do hope there's somebody who's mild-mannered. Uh, Deep, what about you? I, it is, uh, of course, at the end of the day, as Charu has been highlighting, these are all adults. They've been playing cricket for most of their lives. So the factor on who the coach is or who the captain is should not matter as much to their uh, careers or to their performances. But it does, of course, play a role. And given the fact that we're going to see an overhaul, uh, how do you think that's going to bear and, have, and, and you know, um, uh, play out in the coming days? Well, for me, I think the most important job of a coach or a support staff is to create the right environment. Because end of the day, no matter what industry you're in, you want your bosses to create the right environment where you feel comfortable, safe, you know, secured, and you give you 100%, right? You be yourself. So I think that's where uh, coaches become very, very important. For example, I think uh, the biggest example is, uh, is, is Cheteshwar Pujara. Suddenly, it was the same person with the same technique, but just took one innings. One innings and he looked like a different player altogether. So that it possibly couldn't have been, you know, technical coaching or physical coaching. It was more of creating the right environment, creating everything around him so that he could just be himself. So I think that that big coach's job becomes very, very important uh, uh, in, in the bigger picture. Uh, and and as, as both of them mentioned, I think there are enough Indian coaches and good uh, trained coaches, not just big names I'm talking about, good coaches and amongst all the names that I've taken. And listen, there has been a good coaching staff uh, which has been working with the India A side, someone like Aparas Mamre or Abhesh Sharma. All these guys have done a fabulous, fabulous job behind the scenes working with the India A, the under 19s. I think they've, I mean, and, and they did, they deserve that job as well. I mean, uh, and someone like, uh, let's say Vivius Lakshman. I mean, I've I've worked with him as a coach, not uh, as 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 a friend or as a player, but as a coach as well. He was with the Bengal side. Now he's with the uh, with the Hyderabad side. I mean, why not someone like him? Uh, so yeah, I mean, having bottom line is there are there are enough Indian coaches, very good Indian coaches who can take over. Someone like an Amol is there or a Sairaj is there. There's so many of them. Uh, Rishikesh Kanekar, he's doing a he's been doing a fabulous job for last ten years. I mean, Vijay Bhai will tell you he follows domestic cricket so keenly. I mean, he's one of the better, I mean, one of the best domestic coaches we have, Rishi. So, you know, why not them? I mean, there are enough Indian good coaches out there. Well, I'm sure there are, but uh, interesting days ahead for Indian cricket. But before all of that, before the who the next coach is or who the next captain is, of course, we have uh, the World Cup in October, the T20 World Cup. Gentlemen, thank you so much for speaking to Mirana. I really appreciate you taking time out. And of course, uh, Virat Kohli has a lot of cricket ahead of him, but he's really proven his mettle as captain. And uh, we look forward, of course, to more wins under his belt. लाइफ के इन लेवलअप्स के साथ क्या आपका टर्म कवर बढ़ता है एस बी आई लाइफ ई शील्ड नेक्स्ट